July 1864. Two generals faced each other in Virginia, Robert E. Lee, the master of maneuver, and Ulysses S. Grant, the relentless grinder. Yet behind the gun smoke and the roar of cannon, another force shaped their war. Not courage, not strategy, but technology. The Civil War was no longer a fight of men alone. It was the birth of modern warfare. And in this new world, Lee found himself fighting not just Grant, but the Industrial Revolution itself. If you love uncovering the hidden side of history, the weapons, the secrets, the strategies they never taught in school, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss our next deep dive. 1. The Telegraph The First Instant Battlefield Network Before the Civil War, wars were fought with quills and couriers. A general would write orders, seal them, and hand them to a horseman who might take hours or even days to deliver them. But in Grant's hands, the telegraph became a weapon. The Union strung more than 15,000 miles of wire, connecting generals, rail depots, and even battlefield headquarters. With a tap of his finger, Grant could coordinate movements across hundreds of miles and receive almost real-time updates from Washington. Lee had no such luxury. His army relied on couriers slipping through forests and enemy lines, vulnerable to capture. Messages could arrive too late or never at all. Imagine the frustration. Lee plans a daring maneuver, but reinforcements never arrive because the orders are still bouncing along a muddy Virginia road in a messenger satchel. Grant wasn't just fighting Lee. He was fighting faster. This was the Civil War's internet. And trust me, if you think the telegraph changed everything, wait until you see what the railroad did. 2. Railroads Steel Arteries of War The Civil War was the first great conflict where railroads dictated victory. The Union controlled over 22,000 miles of track, almost triple the South's. That meant Grant could move an entire corps, thousands of men, with artillery and supplies, in less than a day. His armies weren't bound by the speed of marching feet. They could appear like thunderbolts where Lee least expected them. For Lee, railroads were both lifeline and liability. His troops could occasionally shift quickly, but Confederate tracks were narrow, worn, and few. Worse, Union cavalry raids tore up rails, bent iron, and burned depots, leaving Lee stranded. At Petersburg, Grant's slow strangulation of Confederate supply lines hinged on cutting off the last railroads feeding Richmond. Once those lines were severed, Lee's army began to starve. Railroads didn't just carry food and men, they carried the fate of the Confederacy. If this kind of hidden history fascinates you, go ahead and give this video a like. It tells YouTube you want more stories like this. 3. Rifled Muskets and the Mini Ball The Death of Old Warfare In Lee's youth, armies fought at close range with smoothbore muskets, effective barely 100 yards. But by the 1860s, the rifled musket with the deadly mini ball changed everything. Suddenly, soldiers could kill with precision from 400 yards. The battlefield became longer, deadlier, unforgiving. Yet generals, both north and south, clung to Napoleonic tactics, mass infantry charges across open fields. At Cold Harbor, Grant ordered such an assault. Within 20 minutes, 7,000 Union men lay dead or wounded, their blue coats carpeting the grass. Veterans called it a massacre. The weapon had outpaced the tactics, and both Lee and Grant were forced to adapt or watch their men die in heaps. Technology was rewriting the rulebook in blood. Hard to believe, right? And we're only getting started because the new artillery was even deadlier. Fourth artillery revolution, thunder on the battlefield cannons were nothing new, but the Civil War introduced rifled artillery capable of hurling shells miles farther with shocking accuracy. At Petersburg, Union engineers mounted massive siege guns on rail cars creating mobile artillery platforms that rained destruction on Confederate trenches. Lee, who once thrived on open field maneuver, found himself hemmed in by a storm of iron. Every attempt to shift troops risked annihilation under shellfire. For the men in the trenches, artillery meant constant terror. Day and night, shells shrieking overhead, explosions tearing men apart. Technology didn't just change how wars were fought, it changed how soldiers lived and how they died. 5. Trench Warfare 
America's first taste of World War I. The rifle and cannon forced both armies to dig. At Petersburg, men burrowed into the earth, carving labyrinths of trenches, bomb-proofs, and tunnels. Soldiers lived like moles, their world a hell of mud, smoke, and endless waiting. Attacks across open ground were near suicidal. No man could cross no man's land without being scythed down. Lee's army, short on men and supplies, endured this grinding siege for nearly 10 months. It was a foreshadowing of the trenches of the Somme and Verdun half a century later. For Lee, the war had become unwinnable, not because he lost his genius, but because the tools of war had changed. What do you think? Was this truly the first World War-style battle? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. 6. Aerial Surveillance, the Eyes in the Sky For the first time, generals looked down on their enemy from the heavens. The Union Army's Balloon Corps floated hundreds of feet above battlefields, observing troop movements and even sketching maps in real time. With a telegraph wire dangling from the basket, observers could send reports straight to headquarters. Grant embraced this new perspective. Lee, however, rarely had access to balloons, lacking both the resources and the infrastructure. Time and again, Confederate maneuvers were exposed from above, robbing Lee of the surprise that once made him so dangerous. The sky itself had turned against him. Crazy to imagine balloons spotting armies from above, right? And it only gets stranger, because the Navy was experimenting with iron warships at the same time. 7. Naval Power and Ironclads Controlling the Rivers Lee and Grant fought on land, but the rivers and seas shaped their campaigns. The Union Navy, with its ironclad warships, enforced a brutal blockade, strangling the Confederacy's economy. Grant's greatest triumph, the capture of Vicksburg, was made possible only by naval guns clearing the way and transports ferrying troops. Lee knew that without supplies from abroad, his army was doomed. But Confederate attempts to break the blockade with their few ironclads and commerce raiders never matched Union industry. The ocean, like the telegraph and the railroads, was another battlefield the South had already lost. 8. Industrial Production The True Union Army Perhaps Grant's greatest ally wasn't a general at all, but the factories of the North. The Union's booming industry produced rifles by the hundreds of thousands, churned out artillery shells, uniforms, tents, canned food, and even prepackaged medical kits. Grant could replace lost men and equipment within weeks. Lee could not. His soldiers marched barefoot, scavenged food, and carried rifles of mismatched calibers. Technology wasn't just about inventions. It was about mass production. The North's assembly lines were as decisive as Grant's battlefield decisions. 9. Medicine. The first steps toward modern battlefield care. The Civil War was a bloodbath, but it was also the birth of modern military medicine. The Union developed an organized ambulance corps, field hospitals, and even anesthesia for surgeries. Thousands of wounded men who would once have died were saved, and many returned to fight again. Lee's men were not so fortunate. Confederate medicine was starved of supplies. No chloroform, no clean bandages, no quinine for malaria. Infection and disease killed more Confederates than Union bullets. In the contest of endurance, medicine itself became a weapon, and once again, Grant held the advantage. 10. Photography, War Exposed Never before had the public seen war so vividly. Photographers like Matthew Brady captured Grant's grim siege lines and the bloated dead on battlefields once commanded by Lee. These haunting images traveled north, galvanizing public support to finish the war. They traveled south, too, breaking Confederate morale. For the first time, technology made war inescapable, not just for soldiers, but for civilians watching from their parlors. The camera changed how the nation understood the cost of victory. If this video is opening your eyes, hit subscribe now. 11th Signal Corps, flags, torches, and the birth of battlefield comms. The Union Signal Corps innovated with coded messages sent by waving flags by day and torches by night. These signals relayed commands faster than couriers, keeping Grant's sprawling armies coordinated. Mobile telegraph wagons soon followed, stringing wires across fields as battles raged. Lee's men had their own signal corps, but without the Union's resources, their communication remained slower and more vulnerable.
In war, minutes could mean victory or disaster. Grant's use of technology often turned those minutes into triumphs. Twelfth, repeating rifles. The future in soldiers' hands, most soldiers still carried single-shot muskets. But in some Union regiments, troops wielded Spencer repeating rifles, capable of firing seven rounds before reloading. Lee's men, with no access to such advanced weapons, often faced a storm of lead they couldn't match. One Confederate officer remarked bitterly, It is unfair to fight men who load their guns but once a week. Though not widespread, repeating rifles foreshadowed the firepower of the 20th century and gave Grant yet another edge in critical battles. 13. Psychological Technology The sound of industrial war beyond the bullets and shells. Technology waged war on the mind. At Petersburg, Union mortars bombarded Confederate trenches day and night, depriving soldiers of sleep, breaking their nerves. The constant shriek of shells and crash of artillery turned men hollow-eyed and jumpy. Lee's men weren't just fighting Grant's soldiers. They were fighting Grant's machines, machines that wore them down in body and spirit. This was no longer war as Lee had known it. It was total war. Fourteenth, engineers, masters of earth and iron. The Union Army of Engineers became an invisible army of its own. They built pontoon bridges in hours, allowing Grant to cross rivers that once shielded Lee. They demolished Confederate railroads with twisted Sherman's neckties. At Petersburg, they dug the infamous Crater Tunnel, filling it with explosives that ripped a gaping hole in Lee's defenses. Though the attack that followed failed, it proved something chilling. Technology now allowed men to reshape the very battlefield itself. 15. Codes, Spies, and Telegraph Wars Even technology bred counter-technology. Confederate spies tapped Union telegraph lines, intercepting messages. In response, the Union developed ciphers, code books, and secret transmission methods. The war became an arms race of brains and machines, where every advantage demanded a new defense. Grant's forces, with more resources, usually stayed a step ahead. For Lee, it was another battlefield where he could never quite catch up. 16. Telegraph Wagons, Mobile Communication on the Move the Union didn't just use fixed telegraph lines. They had portable telegraph wagons. Imagine a wooden cart fitted with spools of wire and a small operator's desk. These mobile units could unroll new lines as Grant's army advanced, keeping him connected to Washington even deep in Virginia. Lee, by contrast, had no such field network. His messages were always at the mercy of riders in time. 17. The Railroad Guns The First Railway Artillery Grant's engineers mounted massive cannons on railroad flat cars, creating the world's first railway artillery. These monsters could be moved quickly and brought devastating fire against Confederate positions. It was industrial power weaponized, something Lee had no way of matching. 18. Military Telegraph Codes, Early Cybersecurity Every telegraph line was vulnerable to interception. To prevent Confederate spies from reading their plans, Union operators developed complex codebooks and ciphers. This was the birth of modern signals intelligence, protecting communications with technology, not just secrecy. Lee's army often had to gamble with guesswork because their spies couldn't crack Union codes fast enough. 19th, flamethrower experiments and Greek fire myths. Yes, during the siege of Petersburg, Union troops actually experimented with early flamethrower-like devices pumping flammable liquids through tubes. While they were crude and rarely successful, they terrified Confederate defenders. Rumors of Greek fire spread through Lee's trenches, showing how even experimental tech could shake morale. 20. Telegraph tapping. Confederate counter-tech Lee's men weren't helpless. Confederate scouts sometimes climbed telegraph poles, tapped Union wires, and listened in on conversations between generals. In response, Grant's forces shifted to double transmission lines and encrypted messages. This technological chess match was a war within the war. The Gatling Gun The machine gun arrives in 1864. The Union Army introduced the Gatling Gun, capable of firing 200 rounds a minute. Though not widely deployed, they saw action during Grant's campaigns. Confederates who faced them were stunned. This was no ordinary musket fire. 
but the terrifying rattle of mechanized death. Lee's army never had access to such weapons, leaving them once again behind the curve. 22nd, military balloons versus snipers. Union balloons gave Grant the edge, but Lee's men weren't passive. Confederate sharpshooters targeted balloon observers whenever possible, sometimes forcing them to descend. This was the first clash of aerial tech versus counter-sniper tactics, a dynamic that would echo into the 20th century. Field printing presses. Newspapers at the front Grant's army use portable printing presses to issue orders, manuals, and even newspapers directly in the field. These boosted morale, spread propaganda, and standardized instructions. Lee's army, cut off from resources, could rarely match such innovations. The war of ideas was fought with ink as well as iron. War maps and cartography advances in surveying and printing allowed Grant's staff to produce accurate war maps faster than ever before. This gave him a clearer picture of terrain, rivers, and enemy positions. Lee, often deprived of such resources, had to rely on local knowledge and less precise sketches. In war, knowledge was power, and maps were a form of technology. Lee fought with brilliance, but brilliance alone could not stop the march of technology. Telegraph wires, railroads, repeating rifles, trenches, and industry itself tilted the scales toward Grant. The Civil War began as the last war of the old world, but it ended as the first war of the modern age. And in that new age, it was not Lee's daring maneuvers, but Grant's embrace of technology that proved decisive. The battlefield of Virginia was not just where the Confederacy died, it was where modern war was born. What do you think? Was it really technology that doomed Lee? Or was it Grant's sheer determination? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this journey into the past, don't forget to like and subscribe. Share it with fellow history fans and subscribe so you never miss the hidden stories that shaped our world. Until next time, keep history alive.